Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another super cool radio interview. I'm your host, Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have a great guest joining me at this time who I'm excited to have on the podcast. In September, the other LA released a new single and music video for Freak Show. Please welcome Aria, the lead vocalist of the other LA. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Doing good. Right on. As I said, it's uh, nice to have you on the podcast. Nice to see you again. I know we got uh, quite a bit to discuss with uh, the other LA Freak Show and all that. You guys have been very busy this year. Yes. Thankfully, um, we're taking a break from touring just so just get the holidays out of the way because with everybody's schedule, it's just so difficult to plan shows around that time. So I'm, I'm really enjoying this time off. <laughs> Right, and so uh, how's the show been going? You guys been, you know, as, as I said, touring pretty extensively. So how's all that been going? It's going pretty good. We actually played our first ever cruise ship show back in September. We were playing Rock of the Magnifica, coming from Miami to the Bahamas, and that was amazing. Oh yeah, for sure. I've, I've interviewed a few bands who uh, were performing there. So like, how was it? Was it a different experience to be performing in the ocean compared to on land? Oh, yes. Like, after we performed, that's when the boat started to move, and I had severe vertigo afterwards. So that would be a very different experience, but I'm um, glad, to, glad to hear you guys did. For the most part, pretty good. Uh, hopefully, the oh, vertigo yes. went we had so much fun. Oh, right on. Right on. So, no, uh, I'm curious, because obviously you guys have the new uh, single, Freak Show, as I said. So, like, uh, how was it uh, writing and recording the single? So we were experimenting with different sounds, like different genres. Freak Show is one of the first uh, songs we've written that's in, like, drop A. So the guys had to, like, buy a new guitar so, so they can tune that low because for a while we just played in, like, drop D and drop C. But now we're going towards, like, the lower tuning to make it sound, like, darker and heavier. Oh, right. Yeah, I definitely can tell with the single you guys definitely changing changing the kind of direction and the sound of it so like how did that start like to kind of move in that direction well we started out as like an emo band back in the day since like 2019 i've been listening to new genres like definitely i love tool and deftones, tones but i also like songs from the 80s like dark 80s like the cure bauhaus and Susie and the banshees kind of have that um, darker element with like the dark synth synths. Yeah, I'm sorry, I stutter sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Not a problem. Yeah, like we were just wanted to um, go to a new direction because I was kind of getting bored with the emo sound, and I just wanted to do something new. Oh, right on, definitely, uh, definitely tell with like the the new set of music. You guys have definitely uh, been changing it up, as I said. So like, uh, I'm curious. So like, the new set of music you guys are like currently writing. Is it a different, like, experience writing this music compared to your previous music? I would say yes, because when we first started writing, I would just write the lyrics and that was it. But now I feel like I, I have a say when it comes to, like, the writing style, like, the guitar tone and, like, how I want the drums to sound. I've gotten more comfortable in what I want for the band. And it's been going really well. We're all on board with this direction and we couldn't be happier. Right, I'm very, very glad to hear about that. So I've, I've also like I've read and uh, I've seen kind of some other interviews as well that um, so currently the other LA kind of going through a metamorphosis of, yes. of sorts. So like, what's kind of this next chapter of the band looking like? Basically, we like to call it Tola 2.0. Like our old sound is gone, is done. It's basically like a reincarnation or like a phoenix rising from the ashes like out with the old and in with the new kind of going along with that so like can you give me like hints for like you know the upcoming music from you guys like what people can expect 
Yes, so we're actually taking this time off to write some new music as well. Like, if you like Freak Show, we're de we definitely have other songs that have more of a synth in it, but still has that darker sound that we're going for. And hopefully we'll be coming out with an album early in the early spring of 2025. Right on, I like that. You know, I'm huge fan of albums, so I'm definitely uh, looking forward to that, plus the new music you guys have been working on. Obviously, I very much enjoyed uh, your music, obviously, because I've, you know, I've seen you live and really been digging the uh, the new singles you guys have been releasing. So I'm very excited for you guys to kind of start the, the next uh, chapter for the band. Thank you so much. So, but I also did want to highlight uh, the music video for Freak Show because it looked really cool. I really like all the, the visuals uh, in the music video. So uh, how was it filming it? It was awesome. Actually, I was in Long Island, New York, um, recording um, Freak Show and everything. And we decided to do a music video while I was up there. We had uh, the videographer for Lamb of God actually recorded our video. So that that's why it looks super professional because it was done by a professional. Oh, for sure. Very, you know, top-notch professional with that. So, like, how was, like, uh, like the locations and stuff? Like, how was it picking uh, the locations for the music video? So I actually did it in the – so I was recording with uh, Mike Watts. He he basically recorded all these legendary New York City post hard not post hardcore New York City hardcore bands. And I was staying over at his place for a month while we were recording. And it was basically just at his house. And we also had a green screen for, like, the forest scene since it was in the middle of winter. And I really didn't want to get hypothermia just for doing a music video. <laughs> Oh, you know, for sure, for sure. I can, <laughs> I can imagine that with uh, with how cold it does get over there. Yeah. But um, so, like, uh, the concept for the music video. So, like, how did that come about to develop uh, the concept? I'm really into surrealism. One of my favorite artists is Salvador Dali, and we kind of wanted to give it that atmospheric kind of thriller. Because when it comes to like horror, I'm not really into the blood and guts. I think that's kind of gross. I'm more into like the psychological horror, like basically lo slowly but surely losing your mind. That's the type of horror that I like. Yeah, I can appreciate that as well. I'm I'm definitely, I lean more on the blood and guts side myself, but uh, <laughs> I do like, I do like some good psychological horror. So like, sorry, real, real quick, and I will be getting back to the music video, but um, like some of your favorite like psychological horror movies, do you have a few favorites? I definitely love The Shining, of course. That's one of the best ones. I'm also a big fan of Junji Ito. He's one of my favorite animators. Uh, it's like a Japanese manga. Now it's turned to an anime. You can see it on Netflix. It's basically like short stories. Think like Tales of the Crypt, but Japanese. Sure, I'm going to check that out. Definitely going to check that out. Sounds it sounds very cool. And obviously, The Shining is amazing. It is Absolutely. Amazing. It's a masterpiece, and you no, know, it's still part of you know American culture and society for however many years at this point. So Absolutely. it's a classic. So no, but I did want to shift to the live performance side now for the other LA. Uh, as I said, you guys have been touring pretty extensively. So like, do you prepare like differently to perform live compared to recording music? Oh yes, like. An hour before we go on, I have to be alone because I, I need to get my head together. And it does take me a lot a good while to get ready because I do heavy makeup and crazy hair and my clothes. It takes forever. But also, I need to get my head together, too. Like, I cannot be around anybody before I perform or else I won't do a good job. Definitely have to get into the, the like, headspace to perform yes. live. For sure. I, I definitely understand that. So, like, um, for you, like, so... For, like focus on the set so like do you have a favorite song to perform live so i can't really say what the name is yet but we basically wrote this song back in february and it kind of has that same darker sound but a lot more electronic in a way and that is probably my favorite song to play live like if we ever play if we ever play south bend again we're definitely gonna play it live and you'll understand what i mean well if you guys do performance on that, I will I will be there. I definitely look forward to checking it out to to you know hear the song live. But like I'm curious, so like when you before you guys record a song or in the recording process, do you guys like road test them at like shows before like like fully like releasing a song? Yes, because we want to see like 
how the audience reacts just to see if they like it or they hate it. With these new songs, they're basically taken aback at first, like, oh my gosh, this sounds nothing like you guys. And then they start really getting into it because it sounds so different from us. And people say, like, we're definitely maturing as a band. And that's that's what I love to hear. Oh, definitely. I've definitely noticed that, too. Obviously, you know, between seeing you guys live and the new set of music, it definitely, you guys are again, evolving that sound and definitely uh, maturing with, like, the, the vocals and the sound and just overall with everything. Thank you. Now that you have, like, the new music, you guys are in the writing and recording process. So how has it been, like, to include... Uh, some of these songs like in the set itself i will say i now i'm now starting to enjoy playing live because for the past couple of years we basically had the same set and i was getting so tired of it and i was like we we need to write some new music because i'm about to lose my damn mind i can understand i can definitely understand that with everything um but yeah i know you gotta you gotta keep uh you know change the setup you know writing recording new music because then it's obviously fun for you guys and it's fun uh for everyone seeing that you, that yes. you don't play the same music every time because it definitely shows on stage because for a while i was just so bored and everything and now i'm a lot more alive in our set i'm headbanging more i'm kind of like looking like a maniac on stage because i should love the new direction we're going for and i can finally say i'm really happy with this new direction that we're going for before we start this, i'm curious because as i said you guys have been touring a lot so like what are some of your like favorite venues uh, or most unique venues you have performed at oh that is a good question let me think i would we definitely pl we played the whiskey a go go a long time ago with flaw and that was incredible that was definitely an experience let me think of the other venues, because there's so many cool venues that we play at. The venue we play at South Bend was pretty cool, too. Like, that was a really good, that was a good-sized stage and everything. And I also love um, Exit Inn, which is a famous venue in Nashville. Like, all these legendary bands played on stage. And there's also a venue called the Cobra. It's like, it's a punk venue. It's local, and I basically know everybody that works there, and it just makes us feel at home. I've had some friends play the Cobra. I heard a lot about it. It's, a, it, awesome. it's an awesome venue. I, I want to get if I travel down, I definitely want to catch a show there. Absolutely, definitely. Like I said, it's got that divey punk atmosphere, which I personally love. So now, um, as we're starting to wrap up this interview, so I'm, I'm curious. Obviously, we talked a lot about like what you guys are working on currently with the other LA, but like, how's the rest of this year looking like, and what is like 2025 looking like for the other LA? So fingers crossed, we are trying to play a European tour either in February or March of 2025. So we're just trying to get our visas updated. So. It'll be our first time playing Europe, which I've always wanted to play. Um, I visited Spain and Paris uh, this past June, and I was in love. And now we're hoping to actually play shows over in Europe. So we are all really excited for that opportunity. Oh, well, that sounds like it's going to be really cool. And definitely, uh, I, I've heard, you know, again, from some people I've interviewed who have toured in Europe. It's a very kind of a different experience, and they got some very cool venues in Europe as well. Absolutely. So um, I hope that works out for you guys. I know that'd be an amazing experience. Thank you. All right. So now, um, as we're closing this interview out, so for everyone watching and listening, where are the best places to find the other LA online? Well, the best is probably our Instagram and our TikTok page, but we also have a brand new Facebook page called Tola Rocks. T O L A. We basically wanted to um have a brand new Facebook profile because for our old one, we had like a bunch of old pictures and now we just want an updated version of it. Right on. I'll make sure to leave some links for the other LA in the description of this podcast. Please check out support them. As I said, new single freak show is currently available right now with the music video, but Aria, thank you so much for some of my super cool radio. I had a fantastic time chatting with you. Thank you. Thanks for inviting me. Of course. Of course. For Aria of the other LA, I'm your host always Matthew Thomas. Thank you so much for watching and listening to super cool radio. And remember, Stay frosty.